So uh, I came to Station 32 the first time in uh, 1987. I think actually the second shift I ever worked was at this station. It was an engine and truck house back then. Um, so it, strangely enough, the truck uh, minimum staffing was one, the engineer. The station was busy. We ran probably more fire alarms than anything here, but uh, uh, it was good that one truck company in the district, so we got to run pretty much every fire, every extrication. Uh, that we had. It was a little quieter. There was uh, a lot of the buildings behind us weren't built yet so uh, there was uh, a story apparently told recently of a archery incident that where a arrow got shot into the pipes. We shot our bows a lot out in the backyard but we never really shot them in the house. I think the captain put a stop to shooting bows in the house at that point. So. So it was, it was pretty busy. We very rarely slept at night. And the shift I was on seemed to catch a lot of fires. I think uh, my first fire was my third shift here. Um, yeah, we, we seemed to catch a lot of, you know, single family stuff every once in a while, multifamily. We did have uh, Greenwood City Shops, which was a big one. We were, uh, we had just finished eating lunch. We were sitting uh, in the day room and the engineer happened to look out the window over toward uh, Greenwood City Shops and saw a big puff of smoke. and said something about hey there's smoke and then he saw the flames and it was kind of interesting because there were six of us all of a sudden trying to get out the door into the bay while the cap called uh, uh, dispatch which is kind of funny because it was Greenwood PD which was in the same parking lot as Greenwood City Shops and it was interesting we got there there was uh, there was two of us there was three of us on two two and a half stretching the lines for the initial part of that Pretty, you know, we, I think we ended up going two alarms on that. It was the biggest one I'd certainly been on in, in quite a while. Uh, shortly after that, unfortunately, was Marco Polo, the fire that Captain Hager died in. Uh, and it's, you know, I guess it's part of the legacy of this station too, I guess. Um, unfortunately, we were at that one. Um, hoping to never repeat that one, I guess. Okay, obviously this is the apparatus bay. Uh, when I got hired here, it was just an engine and a truck. Uh, once we got the heavy rescue, it was parked over in this bay. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but underneath the tower, there is uh, a pit to do maintenance. At one point, uh, the mechanic worked out of here and did maintenance on the trucks. Uh, back then, it was a lot more low key. So basically, it was just changing oil and fixing whatever they could fix. Anything else had to go back to uh, front range or whoever was doing our warranty work. Unfortunately, our workout area in this station is really small, so a lot of it gets done in the bay. Uh, so some of our workout equipment is back here. Uh, we got the squat rack, pull-up bar. Uh, this is our, everything's in a little bit of disarray right now because we're in the process of moving, but uh, this is our little workshop. Got a few hand tools. There's an SCBA station, fill station right back here in the corner, uh, which has been there for quite a while. It's an older one. It's going to get replaced. Um, but back in the day, you know, guys would work on projects if there were downtime. We'd work on, you know, shelving for the rigs, uh, anything that we were adding, you know, upgrades that they would allow us to do to our rigs or working on them if they broke down way back in the day. So, uh, upstairs, uh, when I got hired, this was a little classroom up there. 
And unfortunately in the afternoons it would be about 110 degrees up there so it became a challenge to stay awake during EMS training. I'll just throw that out there. Uh, now it's the BC quarters. So they, fortunately for them, they got a big air conditioning unit up there. And uh, I think the BCs have been up there for, eh, I'm going to say somewhere around 10 years-ish. Up in front is, uh, currently it's an office uh, being packed up, as you can see. When they opened this station, uh, this was actually a BC quarters. When the, the station was brand new, had a BC. Uh, the next room down was station officer. Uh, and then I believe the engine was in there initially and then they added the tower. But this was the BC quarters initially. Once the BC moved out, they uh, just had the station officer bedroom and uh, office all together. Kind of tight, but perfect. Just like we like it right now. Nice and small, <laughs> close to the bay. Uh, and then the day room. A lot of training goes on in here, maybe a little bit of TV watching. Um, and then the wall, that's kind of our pride and joy. That's going to be saved for us. That's one of the first things that they're going to take out of the station once uh, we close it down. They're going to preserve the wall and put it into the new station. Pretty small kitchen, but it functions well for us. Again, it's, uh, it's seen better years, but a lot of good meals have been cooked in this here kitchen by all of us. So. Then we've got laundry room, bathrooms, a little workout room in the back. This has been remodeled about three or four times. Actually, the, this workout section is kind of a lean-to that's added onto the back of the station. But like you can see, pretty small for the amount of workout equipment that we have these days. When I got hired, the bunk room itself is, uh, was an open bunk room. There were no partition walls. I'm glad I don't have to live back here. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of cozy. We got the nice bed sheet and shower curtains, partition cover, room doors, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I got hired, this was completely open and we had a pool table in the back. And if there were more than uh, six of us, if one of the rigs happened to get four, he had to sleep on the pool table. Thursday evening, October 26th, and uh, a couple days away from Station 32 being uh, dismantled and a new house being built. Uh, so the guys invited me to dinner tonight and, you know, sitting around the kitchen table telling war stories of uh, all the fun that we had as uh, firefighters. Uh, I told the story of when I was a rookie at Station 32, and I was lucky enough to uh, be able to rove around quite a bit, and I, I always loved coming up here and working with the crew that was here. So. One day, um, we decided uh, one of the firefighters had just gotten a new compound bow, and uh, he knew that I was a bow hunter, and so he, he said, hey, let's go out in the backyard and shoot the bow. 
So we're out, you know, 15, 20 minutes shooting the bow and it started to rain. So we didn't want to get all wet, decided to come inside, and, um, but we weren't really done having fun yet. So uh, somebody came up with the idea of uh, shooting the bow in the bedroom because it used to be a wide open dormitory bedroom. And so that was going to be a lot of fun. So we set up some uh, backing material if in the bedroom. You can imagine what that backing material was. And we had fun proceeding to shoot the bow. Well, as a rookie in the firehouse, um, I always tried to get everything put to bed at night, and I was usually the last one to go to bed. And uh, I, in those days, we used to keep our bunker gear right next to the bed. So I get my bunker gear all set up at the foot of the bed, and I don't have any lights on because I don't want to wake anybody up because I'm a rookie. So trying to be quiet, not make any noise. I uh, take my shoes off and go to walk over to get into bed, and the floor is soaking wet. And it's like, wow, something, something's not right here. And so I had to, to, to turn the lights on, and everybody's yelling at me. And I said, hey, hey boys, um, we got a problem. And uh, we came over to where the uh, target was set up, and sure enough, there was a hole in the wall. And uh, we probably were the responsible for putting the hole in the wall. Well, we had a battalion chief in those days, um, Chief Paul Jackson, and Chief Jackson's philosophy was fix it before you go home. You know, we were all young kids in the fire service, all had the same kind of thoughts in our heads, which sometimes weren't really brilliant, but things happened, and every once in a while something would get broke, and Chief Jackson didn't care as long as it was fixed before you went home. So we cut a hole in the wall to see what was going on. And we found that one of the arrows happened to go all the way through the wall and hit a water pipe. So now it's like 11 o'clock at night and how are we gonna fix this copper pipe? So we go to the workroom and we take all the drawers apart looking for some kind of copper fittings to try and fix this and can't find anything. Again, it's the middle of the night. So one of the guys says, hey, I know what we can do. And he cuts a little piece of an inner tube and he gets a little wood screw puts it through there and he says, I bet this will seal it up. And so we take it over and screw that into the pipe and sure enough, the, the water stopped leaking. So we got to put a patch on the wall. We, we were real careful cutting the drywall out. So we had drywall to put, put the patch in. But then it was, how are we gonna mud this? We, you know, we don't have any drywall mud. Well, we've learned that night that toothpaste and toilet paper makes real good drywall mud. So we mudded it up. There was some paint in, the, in there. Two o'clock in the morning, we're in the bedroom painting the wall. So um, we're gonna be building the new firehouse and I just wanted to uh, open the wall up and find that piece. Um, I plan on making a plaque with it um, in honor of Chief Paul Jackson and fix it before you go home. All companies and stations on the air. After 40 years, station 32 will be closing for rebuild. Tower 32, report to station 31 as Tower 32. Battalion 32, report to station 35 as Battalion 32. Medic 32, report to station 33 as Medic 33. All units are in service at station 32. This closed. Medcom's clear, 902. All uniform personnel, active! Pipe Major, by your command! This has always been my favorite station. I like the call load. I like being on the tower. Um, it's just kind of been home to me since I got here. So I know it's kind of an old rundown station at this point, but it's, it's still home. A lot of the history comes with us, I think, just with the guys. So it, it's a building. Yeah, it has a lot of history, but I think we can move that on to the new one, I hope.